Yeah. So I want to ask you about um, the difference between selling a chip versus selling an ecosystem and services. So I think a lot of people who are not experts in semiconductors, but they vaguely understand like Intel sells a chip. Great. They sell a chip. In the case of something like this, there is a continued spend after you sell the GPUs on system maintenance and on on services revenue and the software platform can can you explain for the sure. viewers who aren't really like on the ground here how this works yeah. it's not just as simple as oh how many chips will they sell it actually ends up looking more like apple yes they sell a lot of iPhones but then what else happens on the revenue side after that sale yeah and i think apple's a great comparison because i think the biggest, and, and let's just compare it to NVIDIA. Many viewers, oh, it's iPhone. Yeah, that, that's ultimately, you know, what this company does. The biggest part of the valuation change in Apple has been services. That's where I believe that's worth $1.7 trillion. Yeah. In, when you look at NVIDIA, it's not just chips. When you look at the overall platform and architecture, this is essentially companies that like, okay, we're going to buy the drink. We're gonna buy the we're gonna buy the meal here, but now we're gonna have to pay them an incremental 30, 35 percent every year, essentially in perpetuity on services as well as on infrastructure and on software. Right. That's the difference. Yeah. So so when you think about it, see like Intel, the reason Intel, if you looked up disaster in the dictionary, you know, you'd see their ticker <laughs> is because they never understood whether it's the bureaucracy, they've lost the talent, you know, wh whatever it may be. Jensen always understood the prize was not just about coming up with the chips and the GPUs. It was about the overall architecture. And that's why like, when you look at what they've done, they've essentially, they've essentially courted it. In other words, this should almost be like going to a baseball game. And any meal you buy, any drink you buy, goes to the same vendor right. eventually. Right. That's kind of what they've done from an AI perspective. But now who builds on top of it? It, uh, it gets built on a hyperscaler, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, the apps, ServiceNow, Salesforce, WordCaddy, Palantir. That speaks in second, third, fourth derivative all being built on top of what, what Jensen did. There's a switching done. cost too. If you if you have built your AI services on on NVIDIA architecture, um, it's not as simple as AMD has a 20% cheaper chip. We'll just start swapping them in. I don't think it works that way. Am I right? It would cost <laughs> It could cost potentially two, three X to switch. Right. The switching costs are just, per, they're just almost impossible. Hey, look, and that's so different than Oracle, Microsoft, SAP, Dell. I mean, you go down the list. You standardize. That's why you standardize. And, and not just that, your, your IT professionals are standardized. Your users yeah. are standardized. The apps are standardized. Right. I want to I want to roll through some charts because uh, the fundamental story here, like getting getting away from the technology edge, which I think everyone understands, Nvidia is yep. miles ahead. But just the the execution as a public company is really breathtaking. The first chart that we have up here, I think you can see this, Dan. This is yep. uh, sixty two point one percent operating margin for NVIDIA's uh, Q2 2025 fiscal. So that's, that's what they recorded. So the the blue bar, you can see that they are, they are making huge investments, but their operating margins are staying in the low to mid 60s. They're not falling off at all. And they are significantly higher than where they were four and five quarters ago in, in, in the 50s. I don't think we've ever seen a company be able to do this. And guess what? If they weren't investing just massively, they'd be like wait, they'd be like major senior citizens living in Delray Beach, like eighties and like eighties and nineties. Yeah, exactly. Right. They'd be they'd be seventies, eighties. I mean, the point is, is that that's the thing that's underscored is that essentially the margin profile has doubled, and now once this massive spending even starts to abate, 
and they've invested, this is a margin. It's a free cash flow rate. It's a store. And that's why I continue to view it as like, you start to look out here, five, six, seven dollars of earning. Tell me it's expensive. I it's just hard to see that just given the scale. Okay. Let's look at the revenue. So this next chart is quarterly revenue hit $30 billion in Q2 2025. Um, that it looks as though, based on estimates, it's going to 32.8 next quarter, 36.2. Uh, in uh, two quarters from now. And, you know, again, it's really almost inconceivable to have a company continue to ratchet up uh, the, the revenue to this degree long after it's become the largest company in the world. And they're doing it. So like somehow these are, these are quarterly numbers. So we're looking at like a, a company that's already above a hundred billion dollar annual run rate. And it's not stopping. Well, no, they're, I mean, based on all the math, 2250 type of annual is where it's had. I know it's like, I don't see how it almost doesn't go there, just given the overall demand, because all these CapEx dollars, they're all coming into the doors of Jensen and NVIDIA. Now, you could be like, okay, AMD, they get 10% share, they, but that's not changing the story because of where the spending is going. And now, and this is very important. What Jensen talked about in terms of on the call, and we've seen it from customers, the use case, the ROI, as the use cases explode, this that's the train. Nothing stops the train. I don't have this chart with me today, but uh we used it on uh we used it on the channel a couple of days ago on what are your thoughts. But uh we have a chart that uh shows the top five customers of NVIDIA, and on one axis it's showing the dollar amount that uh, and the percentage of their own capex, and then on the other axis, it's showing what percentage of Nvidia's revenue is. So, in other words, I think Microsoft, uh, it's something like forty-five percent of their capex yeah. dollars are going to Nvidia, which comprises nineteen percent of Nvidia's revenue. Um, that's the part that the bears would say is the shakiest foundation, like is the least sustainable. But you don't agree with that. Make us feel better about that level of concentration. Um, maybe it's an end user story and the hyperscalers an, are just an, in the middle. It's an end. In other words, the hyperscalers where Microsoft is, that's 95% of enterprise. In other words, like you're, if you're a Microsoft shop and you're going down this path, it's going through Microsoft. There's no one else. That you're going to go through, you're going to go through other hyperscalers, whether it's Google or Amazon. Yeah. So when you talk about concentration today, that actually is more, I think that's actually more like perception because it's not like it's Microsoft itself as a customer. Right. You have to then go down to the thousands of enterprises. So that doesn't really tell the story. In my opinion, it's really about the end user. And as this all plays out, hyperscalers are really almost like a middle man. They're a they're in a, terms of right, they're passing through the compute that they are purchasing from NVIDIA. And it's all right. If, if Josh Brown, Dan, come, puts an order through Microsoft, Microsoft puts it through NVIDIA, the order comes through Microsoft, but the actual order came through me and you. That's right. And Josh, like one of the things, like, and we'll be in Asia over the next few weeks, everything we see demand from a component perspective is increasing. And when I talk about bears and we talk, I always say like the bears can find the AI revolution in 10 for their New York City office building, Metro North Jersey trans or the spreadsheets. And I think that's right. where many have missed it, especially now as Apple, what's been missing the consumer piece. Now you have iPhone 16, you have the consumer revolution, you have 300 million iPhones haven't been up in four years. That all now comes through. Apple eventually open AI and then eventually obviously NVIDIA is going to be a huge benefit. 